Hi, I'm Joan Butzeld and I am your basket weaving teacher today. So basket weaving is an umbrella where there's lots of different components to it. One thing is called coiling and people coil. What they do is they take the fiber, they put it between their fingers and they do a variety of things, but mostly it's stitching. Many of you know sweet grass baskets, pine needle baskets, rye baskets. Those are all forms of coiling. You also have baskets that are made um, out of uh, oak and ash. That's well, the popular thing when people came across the pond um, in the 18th century. They were flabbergasted with how much uh, wood was here and they started expanding their ability to make baskets. Baskets have been around since the beginning of time. Man has always had stuff to carry around. And basket weaving has changed though, it depends upon the fibers that you have. If you live in Florida, you'll make your baskets out of pine, excuse me, either pine needles or palm plants. If you live in Hawaii, there's a special plant that they do use lahala weaving. It's very, very spectacular weaving that Hawaiians do to this day. There's the Nantucket basket out of the famous Nantucket Island designed by men, breaks all the rules. We have glue, we have nails, we have all sorts of different kinds of things. They made them aboard ship and use masks for molds. So they break all the rules, but are pretty spectacular. One of the things that's interesting that when basket weaving came to America, for every purpose there is a basket and for every basket there's a purpose. They would they really expanded their basket weaving. They would make a fish trap, they would make baskets for uh, gathering eggs, so they invented rib baskets and expanded that in a whole different way. And the shakers came about and the shakers became very prolific basket weavers and invented all sorts of things including hexagonal six-sided weaving which they used for colanders. So basket weaver was a very important part of a village. They would do chairs, they would do anything you can imagine a basket weaver could make. So today we're gonna do a solid base basket. So one of the most important things about a solid wood bottom is you have to have a groove put in by a router. And this groove is what we're gonna use to get our spokes in. We're gonna divide the base into fours, and I'm gonna put eight spokes in each quarter. So that gives us a total of 36 spokes. And you can see that they are in there um, rather tenuously as they dry, they are going to fall out. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to secure these. We make sure the first of all that our spokes are in good order. They're all nice and spaced the best that we can. And we're going to take three pieces of round reed. We're gonna place each one of them under the reed and then over the one in front, three in a row. And then we're going to start doing what's called three rod whale. And three rod whale is an amazing process, whoever came up with it. It gives you a beautiful twist on the outside and on the inside, you're gonna see stitches. How it, you do it is you go over two, under two, over two, under two, and you continue with this all the way around twice. And this will actually tighten up the whole base and secure it really nicely. And that will be the uh, basis of a very strong basket. Once we have done that round twice, we are gonna start making our basket actually go up. So we're gonna take them some very nice weaving material and we're just gonna do a very simple over, under, over, under, all the way around, pulling the fiber as we go. And you're gonna see the basket is actually going to start going up. We're gonna do 16 rows of this, and you're gonna actually see that the basket is now pretty well done. So how do we keep this whole thing together? We've got these spiky things, these spokes sticking out here. Um, we've got a nice basket, but there's some problems. I mean, these things will break off, they will poke you. So we're gonna do a last row called the rim row, and it's wider, and it really isn't really all that important because the 
project that it takes care of is securing all the weaving, making sure it's all packed down real nicely, and it's actually gonna disappear. So this is our rim row. Then we're gonna do what's called cutting and tucking. And cutting and tucking is the ones that are behind get cut, and the ones that are in front get tucked. And that is how the actual basket is going to stay together. The problem with that is that although that looks really nice and it's kind of insecure because somebody could like poke it or break it and then your whole basket would fall apart. So our final piece of our basket is we're going to put a rim on. And we take this wider material and it's going to go right over that last row that we had. We're going to cut a nice little um, round edge it. And we're going to use these 18th century, I'm being sarcastic here, uh, clothes pins to secure them. And we're going to go all the way around covering up that rim row that we um, just put on. When we get to the end, we're going to overlap it about three inches. And we're gonna do what's called scarfing. You're gonna take your handy dandy pocket knife and you're gonna just a little bit of uh, ahead of the edge, you're going to make a mark and you're gonna take the underside and you're gonna scarf it. You're gonna make sure that it's nice and thin so that when you look at it, you can hardly even see that there's an overlap because you don't want a great big gap. So we're gonna do that both on the outside and then on the inside. The inside one should be somewhere on the opposite side um, from the outside one because we don't want to have seams bent um, together where you can get a big bulkiness. In colonial times, uh, they would just leave it the way that it is and then do the final step. We like to be a little bit fancier and we put in this thing called seagrass. And seagrass is no particular um, use except just covering up the inside of the basket mechanics and it, and it looks nice. You can also use round reed, but this is seagrass. So the last step we're going to do, you can see that the seagrass is already in here and we've got the um, our very colonial computer ties that I added for extra security. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do a hairpin. And our hairpin goes under the rim underneath the seagrass and out the other side and actually you can see it goes right over the top of the basket on in, underneath the seagrass and then there's your hairpin it looks just like an old-fashioned hairpin and we're basically just going to start stitching i'm going to make a needle so that it's easy to stitch and you're going to be able to just basically sew your basket together and when you get this all done you have a beautiful basket and this basket obviously is from the state of Maryland because we have Maryland there. And I have added an additional um, Maryland state coin. And there you go. You have a beautiful basket. And it's all handmade with no nails, no staples, no glue, and no tape.